Hey guys, Fake Rooster here, and today I wanted to give you a, something a little bit different. Firstly, this is not a Battlefield video, which I'm sure is shocking for most of you. Uh, and secondly, this is the first type uh, of the style of video that we're going to be doing, which is first impressions. It's something I mentioned in my very first video I wanted to do, um, and thought I would take Second Extinction as my first take on that. So I played about an hour or so of Second Extinction the other day, just to kind of get a gist and a feel for the game overall, and then talk to you guys about what I found in my time playing. Second Extinction is an intense three-player cooperative shooter made by Systematic Reaction. Your goal is to wipe out the mutated dinosaurs that have taken over the planet. Teamwork is vital as you adopt the role of one of the survivors, using a unique combination of weapons, abilities and skills to take on the vast number of enemies. Fight through the maelstrom of bullets, bombs, teeth, claws and gore, it's up to you to reclaim Earth. The game is currently in a game preview state, which is basically a beta version of the game. It's in a pre-release version, so the development of the game can certainly change over time before the game actually releases. Now, if you are on Xbox Game Pass as an Xbox Game Pass user, there's good news. You can find it on there. Uh, it's also available on Steam on PC, but sadly there is no PlayStation version for those of you on that platform. My overall expectation of the game, from what I had heard, was that it would be kind of like Left 4 Dead, but with dinosaurs instead of zombies. Um, to be honest though, what I found is that it was actually a little bit more similar to Call of Duty Cold War's Outbreak mode. So imagine Outbreak, but with a slightly bigger map with more optional objectives and more ways that you can play it. There are multiple stories you can play on the map and you can choose your hero, loadout, where you drop and things like that as well. I can only assume that as you progress a little bit further into the game, more of these drop points will be available, so you can approach objectives in specific ways, dropping into all areas of the map. Now let's talk about the heroes first. There are five playable heroes as you boot up the game with various loadouts and abilities. These are spread across three different classes. So we have Enforcer, Operative and Trooper. Two Enforcers, two Troopers and one Operative is the makeup that you can choose from. Now there are Scout Rifles, Grenade Launchers, Assault Rifles, Pistols, Shotguns and it goes on and on. Thankfully there are a lot of different weapons for you to play with and enjoy uh, in the game which is always a plus uh, for any shooter is that variety of weaponry. Initially the game of course suggests that you do its tutorial mode that covers the basics of movement and combat and lets you play around with the character's abilities. Um, every character seems to have the ability to heal with a, a stim that you inject. Um, they can also call in armor drops and different passive, tactical and special abilities. Now, passive, tactical and special, those are where the unique identities of each operator uh, become very apparent. Tactical abilities, for example, one character can dash away, one can highlight all enemies. These are kind of like assists for you and your team. And your specials are more the unique abilities. So um, things like absorbing a lot of damage and then firing back at enemies, making allies undetectable, uh, or even healing the whole team. It's this variety that conveys a very interesting sense of those players uh, being able to try out different combinations of characters, which is always good to find unique ways of playing in your own style. And the game also features one of my favourite modern features that makes teamwork really easy, and that's contextual pinging. So you can ping an area of the map and say there's enemies here or we're going over here and things like that as well. It's really good if you're playing on your own and you're playing with the randoms that you can quite organically have some good teamwork going on uh, in games as well. Now speaking of those co-op partners, you can actually invite your friends in obviously and there is matchmaking or you can actually choose to play solo. Now I actually spent most of the time in the game playing solo um, but I am looking forward to revisiting the game at some point with friends as well. So your typical match starts with you selecting the story you want to do. So I think there was about eight or maybe ten stories that you could pick from that had different objectives and then you pick the character you want to play it. Now, as you're actually loading into the matches, there's a little audio clip that kind of gives you a little bit of story as to the reasons that why you need to do these specific objectives and how that helps humanity or, or whatever, which is a really interesting way of telling player a bit of story without creating some form of unskippable cutscene. I'm looking at you, Call of Duty. Now, for me, the first thing I love about the game is the way that you come into battle. Now, I played with a few operators today, starting with Rosie, 
picked her and then dropped into the map and started looking around almost immediately <laughs> having to begin to deal with dinosaurs. Now quickly it became clear that the game was going to be a little bit challenging but I had a minigun <laughs> which helped um, and I did actually love the way that the gunplay felt uh, generally in the time that I played the game as well. And I found very quickly as well there was a nice variety, lots of different types of dinosaurs that had different abilities. So some would spit acid at you, some were armoured, some, and the ones I found the most annoying, would call in reinforcements to try and take you down. Um, so the variety of enemies in general kept things very interesting. Now as a solo player I found it very rewarding to survive these encounters, move around and keep enemies chasing you and then take them down and slowly start to win these encounters and it reminded me a lot again of that zombie feeling of training a bunch of zombies around taking them all out and then moving on to the next wave it had that but some part of it was a little bit more satisfying now my biggest challenge as a solo player obviously lots of intense enemies but ammo um, now thankfully as i said earlier you can call in these drop pods and they're full of ammo that you can go up and collect from them as well um, and thankfully the pistols, the secondary weapons in this game, are actually quite viable. So although I was finding myself running out of primary weapon ammo, I was able to switch to the pistol and still be able to take out the dinos. So after spaffing off your several thousand rounds of uh, minigun ammo, you can switch to the pistol and call in an ammo drop. Now the ammo drops were fun because when you called them in, they would create a shockwave, which was great because you'd be able to um, trail this long line of dinosaurs that are trying to kill you call in a drop rod and send them all flying, which was satisfying beyond belief. So when you drop into the map, as I say, you've got a main objective that's split, I found in the few that I had, split over several parts, um, but the world is literally littered with bonus side missions. So things like clearing out dinosaur nests, sending off supplies and taking information from drones that you can shoot down. Again, a great way of keeping players interested in the world around them, and it gives you that urge to explore these open world games. Now, this game was a lot more open world in style than I was initially expecting, and I actually found it very um, rewarding and a very nice surprise for the game as well. Graphically, the game looks absolutely stunning, and again, that was another nice surprise. It ran fantastically the entire time I'm playing on Xbox Series X, and I think it's a nice blend of that kind of cartoonish and semi-realistic styles together. It, it very much reminds me of something like Apex Legends or Deep Rock Galactic. I, I very much love the modeling of the enemies and the heroes and it's the little details in the gameplay that I'm drawn to and really adore. Uh, for example, if you get attacked and you get injured, blood comes out and then blood starts to appear on your gun, which creates this really, really cool effect. There is also generally a really good sense of humor in the game from different characters saying specific things. So again, when I go back to the game and play it with friends, I'd be interested to hear how those characters interact with each other. And maybe that'll build upon the humor that's there. But humor, always a great addition uh, to games like this as well. After all, you are killing dinosaurs that have taken over the world so you've got to think about it like that um, let the silliness come through a little bit and i should mention full transparency i'm not amazing at video games i did die a couple of times um but really when you're dead you're kind of not quite dead so the game puts you in a down state where a teammate can get you up revive you and off you pop um but there was also a self-revive system, it seemed, that you could maybe trigger if you weren't being mauled to death. Unfortunately, both times I was being severely mauled to death, so I couldn't test that out. Um, after you die, you lose a life, so you've got a certain number of respawns there, and it resets your objectives. So presumably, if your whole team goes down, you'll have to start the objectives again. So uh, it adds that difficulty and maybe that sense of accomplishment when you actually achieve those objectives uh, all the way through with your team. Overall, I really enjoyed my short introduction to the game. I love the way that the guns feel, how intense the gameplay is overall, and I'm very excited to dive back in, as I say, with friends or even with the randoms and start exploring more of these maps. And I'd be interested to see how these maps evolve and the game in general evolves as development on the game continues. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend that you try the game out for yourself if you've got Game Pass or through Steam and let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you agree with what I've said about the game? Do you not? And does it sound like something that you would be into as well? Thanks so much once again for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Subscribe for more and I'll see you all in the next video.